Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. Uh, today what I wanted to do, I wanted to take the very best watches I could find for certain things and uh, compare them with watches that are very affordable, uh, extremely affordable I might add in some cases. So, uh, so let's get started. Now, uh, the Philippe Dufour Simplicity 37 has sold at auction for around a million dollars. And the, the movement is one that's two and a half hertz, 18,000 semi-oscillations per hour, hand wound, and, and it's, just, it's just a gorgeous watch. Uh, the Anglaise, on the on the plates and the bridges it's uh, just really beautiful beautiful movement on the other hand uh something a little more affordable is the tissot heretic petite secondi i've mentioned this watch before because it's it's it has a unitas eta 6498-1 now the dash one is the one that ticks at two and a half hertz or 18,000 semi-oscillations per hour. Looking at these, I can't tell the difference. <laughs> you probably can. 995 is the MSRP, but uh, you can find them. You know, it's funny is that I used to be able to find these for, you know, three and four hundred bucks brand new. And now uh, I think the lowest for brand new one is around six hundred dollars. So have to open up my piggy bank for that one. Okay, moving right along. Now, the next one is one of my, my, my favorite watches. And that's my FP Journe Chronomet Souverain. And one of the things about it, I mean, there are a lot of things about it, but one of the things that's, that is, makes it horologically interesting, or most interesting to me, is the fact that it has two barrels in parallel. Now what two barrels in parallel does is that they're both unwinding at the same time, which means that you're able to get a steadier uh, push on it. You have, instead of one in, in serial, which m most double barrels are, uh, once one barrel poops out, the other one takes over, but where you have it in parallel, they both sort of work together to uh, keep the power constant, constant force. Now, uh, I didn't think <laughs> there were too many. There aren't very many double barrel in parallel. There are some. Uh, the TN uh, Schwartz would be a, a great example of a watch. But those are, are not, they're, they're not anywhere near as expensive as an FP Jorn, but they're not quite the same low price that you can find with a Fabre Luba twin power because the twin power of the Fabre Luba uh, is uh, really low. I mean they have tw twin twin barrels in parallel and uh, so I, I got one of those. In fact I got <laughs> two or three of them I think. 100 bucks a pop uh, I think they're made in India now, or some are made in India and some in Switzerland. Uh, they used to, they, they originated uh, in uh, Switzerland. This particular one in the picture there is a hundred bucks, and that has underneath uh, Fave Luba has Geneva, so that would be Switzerland, obviously. So here you have an extremely expensive watch, and then you can see the dual barrels in the picture above. This is. Uh, one of the movements I was taking apart and putting back together. Oh, I'm halfway there now. Okay, now this next one is the Audemars Piguet Code 1159 Star Wheel. The Star Wheel is a fascinating uh, way of showing time. Uh, it, it, it's an acquired taste perhaps, and perhaps even a little difficult to do. As far as I know, there may be some earlier ones, but I've always thought that uh, Audemars Piguet uh, was the one that, that first had the uh, star wheels. 
Uh, later on, other ones, uh, H. Moser has a wonderful star wheel, but again, it's a little more expensive. Gorilla watches, though, they decided, well, they'll do a wandering hour watch. Uh, they have, uh, they got together with uh, Vosure, and they made the, um, the little, I guess, a module that gave the wandering hours. And then underneath that, I think, is a Salida. Uh, but, you know, the difference between 57900 and 3250 is something that would be uh, certainly attractive. Now, moving right along, uh, here is, um, as being a well-known, not much of a, <laughs> a chronograph fan, um, i got to say the all longa un sunda uh, datagraph is, is really an amazingly good watch. I think F.P. Jorn, um, not F.P. Jorn, but uh, Philippe Dufour has one and said that this was one of the best watches in the world. So it's, it's a pretty good watch. The Caliber L951.1 runs the uh, mechanism for the chronograph. On the other hand, the Laco Keel 2 Ries for white uh, is the Caliber 500. Now it's based on a Salida uh, SW500 both uh, it has a day date while the uh, datagraph only has the date. <laughs> uh, chronograph hours, minutes, and small seconds. So uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> I, I suppose one might argue that the quality of the datagraph is far exceeds that, but so does the price. So the Laco Keel is uh, about uh, nineteen hundred. It is about two thousand bucks uh, compared to eighty-two thousand. Uh, the the Laco Keel is less than the tax on the on the uh, datagraph. Okay. Uh, now finally, this is uh, this is one that I I like a lot that uh, MBNF has done some major watch companies will do the same thing. They'll have this really expensive watch. Uh, in this particular case, MBNF has the uh, Legacy Machine. And uh, what a wonderful watch I would love to have. I don't have a spare 80,000 bucks <laughs> to blow on it. So, so much for that. Uh, the Caliber LM101 hand wound, uh, 45 hours reserve. Really a nice, and then three hertz. That's one of the thing. Uh, I mean, not three hertz, but two and a half hertz. That's one of the things I, I keep finding again and again. People say, "How come you like lower hertz?" Well, the main reason is that the top watchmakers tend to use it. And, you know, what do I know? <laughs> but I can sort of like see what they're doing. Okay. Um, now, on the other hand, this is what MBNF did. They have this thing called the Mad Edition. And the Matt Edition has these wild-looking watches, and uh, the Matt Edition One, Edition One. Oops, I'm not sure how they name things, but they had a, a basically a lottery, uh, and they made 1,500 of it. And if you wanted one, you had to get into the lottery, and if you won, then you uh, got to pay 33.48 for a brand new Mad. And the timekeeping on that is on the side so you got a pretty fat watch on that one but still you can say well i got an mbnf it's sort of a fun watch to have anyway this is my 500th video it's halloween today um and i it just is this is i'm having fun uh i have on this halloween so this is also my halloween colored um Watch H. Moser at Company uh, Center Seconds Endeavor. I uh, love this watch. Okie doke. Uh, let me know what you think. If some other ideas like these kinds of contrasts that you know about, you'd like to, uh, like to talk about, uh, let me know. It's an opportunity to subscribe if you like. And until next time, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Side, the art and science of watch collection.